F-Zero GX. Originally released in 2003 for the Nintendo GameCube, is what I consider to be the single greatest racing game ever made. The sense of speed I get from the game is beyond exhilarating, and it never fails in making me pumped to aim for victory. Not only that, but the cruel CPUs put up a nasty fight no matter the track, making keeping your health up a dire challenge. Unless, of course, you take them out yourself. But then again, the only way to catch up to these dastardly AI racers is by sacrificing your own health for a burst of speed. These factors are at the core of what makes F-Zero GX so special to me, and why I continue to play it even 20 years after its release. However, even with mechanics as good as GX, it would all be for nothing if the tracks didn't take full advantage of them. Thankfully, the game has a superb collection of 25 tracks across 5 Grand Prix that all have unique gimmicks and elements that'll put your skills to the ultimate test. That being said, not all tracks are equal in quality, and some are certainly better than others. So that's why I'm here, to rank all the tracks from worst to best, based on how fun and engaging they are to drive on in a full 30-player F-Zero race. Before we start though, I have a couple of disclaimers. For one, I'm not going to be including the story mode exclusive tracks, including Mute City, Sonic Oval. Yes, I'm aware you can play it in practice mode, but it's too boring to even bother going over and it would be 26 if I actually put it on the list. Also, like with most ranking videos, this is my personal opinion, so don't challenge me to a race in the underworld if you disagree with my picks. Without further ado, let's get into this. This track isn't necessarily bad, it's just very, very boring. There is absolutely nothing that stands out about this track, and honestly, I have trouble even remembering it exists half the time. It's a beginner track that has no unique flair of its own, and you'll be done with it in less than two minutes. The only interesting thing in the entire course is a pretty sharp turn near the end, but besides that, I got nothing. This is essentially F-Zero's equivalent to Rainbow Road, and likewise, it's by far the hardest track in the game. I actually prefer when tracks are challenging, but Slimline Slits just takes it too far. The walls are so narrow that staying straight is a near impossibility with how aggressive the CPUs are. You better swear to Pepsi Man that you don't bump into a wall too fast because the bots will take you out like your last week's garbage. I don't even try to win on this hellscape because just surviving the race is hard enough. On a more positive note, I do like the design choice of placing most of the restore strips right before death pits. It really keeps you on your toes knowing that restoring too much health can lead to your untimely demise, and it's a subversion of the norm fit for the game's most difficult course. It almost feels like sacrilege putting a big blue track this low, but this one's never stood out to me. It's way too short to leave an impact, and overall it seems half-baked. All this track has is a few sharp turns and one jump at the very end. Honestly, the only thing that makes this course memorable is the underwater tubes you drive in because that's at least visually cool. Overall, it's a disappointing track for what is arguably the series' most iconic location. While driving around a cylinder is an intriguing gimmick for a track, Cylinder Knot doesn't do enough with it to make the three minutes you spend here all that engaging. It is fun to maintain balance and not fly around like a maniac, while also making mental notes of where the speed boosters are to maintain a lead, but damn, it gets dull quick. The Cylinder has exactly three moments of interest, a part where there's three bumps, a part where the cylinder bulges, and a final part where you have to weave past a handful of walls. Each of these sections are fine, although they aren't enough to steer off the boredom I get when having to play this track over and over. This track isn't all that interesting, but I'm willing to cut it some slack given it's the very first course in the entire game. While the layout is simple and nothing too special, it manages to remain fast and frantic with a nice corkscrew set piece at the end that gives it something memorable to end off with. I also enjoy the course since it encourages constant boosting with its short length and easy turns, making it a surprisingly frantic struggle to achieve first place. As a starter course, this track succeeds in its job of introducing you to the world of F-Zero. This is the first track in the game that noticeably steps up the difficulty by finally adding in some sharper turns and thinner lanes. Regardless, it's still in the first cup and it's not allowed to go too wild with any of it. As a result, this course is the definition of average. The jump at the beginning is notable, and the ending portion with the road changing in elevation is a novel concept that makes for some challenging turns. Surface slide is fun for what it is, but there's far better tracks than this one. Lateral Shift's central gimmick is the constant lane changes you have to make while driving down the straightaways of the track. If you don't make them quick enough, you'll careen off the cliff and into the sands below. While this is certainly unique, it's not exactly enjoyable. 
the bots can really make this one unbearable since they just love knocking you back into the death lane, especially in the second half when the lanes become even narrower. There is some fun in pulling off risky boosts on the treacherous path, but there's a course literally right before this one that does it significantly better. I don't hate this track, but it's not one I look forward to much. Now we're getting into the tracks I really like, and Loop Cross is the first course in the game that stops holding your hand and expects you to know the rules. The turns are tighter, the lanes are skinnier, and the health pads are sparse. This place feels like a roller coaster with the amount of inversion it takes you through, and I absolutely love the split paths at the beginning of the track that make you choose between restoring health or hitting speed boost to help you get ahead. With how challenging this course can be, that extra speed might be your only shot at getting gold. At a glance, this course is rather unremarkable, being mostly a straight road with inconsequential turns and a forgettable split path. But what makes this boring layout shine is the sheer amount of speed boost plastered over the entire thing. Hitting these can be very tricky, especially in quick succession, but nailing all of these boosters is the key you're going to need to unlock the way to first place. The heavy reliance on boosting is a thrill ride that makes you realize the sheer speed this game can offer you. It's Morbid Time. Like Split Oval, this course may seem pretty dull at first, but actually playing it is a different story. Not only is Green Plant the prettiest locale in the game in my opinion, but the wide open track makes it a perfect place to let carnage ensue. Killing other racers is very much encouraged in GX, and it'll even reward you with an extra life in Grand Prix mode if you kill 5 opponents in one race. Having two large healing pads also makes it another track where constantly boosting is the way to go. It's impressive how the developers made such boring layouts work so well. Driving around in the giant tube is already a cool concept for a level, and this one is able to build off that central idea to make it something far greater. You really have to learn how to gradually move around curves to fully master driving in this unusual environment. Made more difficult by the three spinning turbines you have to drive past halfway through. However, this course is slightly held back by the subpar camera that doesn't always do a great job of showing what's ahead. This is especially apparent in the final section where caution pillars are placed all around, making it very easy to slam right into them like a guy who merges right in front of you without turning on their blinker on the highway. Regardless, this track is still totally tubular. Now this, this is what Cylinder Knot should have been. This level takes the same mechanic and utilizes it in a far more creative way that results in a course that's actually fun to race on, who would have thought? For one, the cylinder is elliptical in shape, making it trickier to maintain control of your machine, while also leading to some very funny moments where you're jumping around the tube like a coked up frog. I also like that the cylinder grows smaller in size to only further the challenge, while also including other distinct elements such as a short split path section and a jump in the middle of one cylinder to a separate one. The best part of the level is the very end where you jump off the gradually shrinking cylinder and into the target that serves as the finish. Make sure you hit the bullseye. What I like about this course is the verticality. The opening section is like no other in the game, and jumping from platform to platform is nothing short of thrilling. This is further compounded by the fact you have to land well on the ground so you don't stop dead like a car that hasn't been inspected in a decade. While the slopes are the main set piece, this track also has other standout elements such as the strip of ice that can be tricked to balance on and the opening inclines that offer tight turns to overcome. Unfortunately, all those aspects are in the first half of the circuit, leaving the latter half to feel dull and unmemorable. There are some narrow paths and twisting curves, but it pales in comparison to what was on display earlier in the level. Even so, this gargantuan complex is still a blast to go through. Intersection builds upon the framework Long Tunnel gave it and takes it to the next level. While the opening tunnel section isn't as impressive as Port Towns, it's able to remain challenging due to its more curvy nature. But this tube is only half the story. The second half of the track is all about nailing the speed boost on both sides of the course whilst making sure to stay in control, uh, unless you want to fall into the trees below by hopping over the wall via the bump in the track. The developers are evil for placing it there, and you bet it's killed me more times than I can count. But honestly, the course is better for it. The final track of the first cup is also its best since it finally takes the training wheels off and gives you a legitimately tricky course to navigate. For one, the entire thing is caked with 90 degree turns that force you to make effective use of drifting. This level also incorporates nearly every main stage hazard in the game. Rough patches of track that slow you down dramatically, mines that explode your vehicle upon impact, 
jump pads that let you soar over entire turns, and slippery strips that can mess you up royally right at the end. This course is a welcome difficulty increase, and its intensity will keep you hooked the whole way through. Aside from being a contender for the best looking track in the game, Meteor Stream manages to further expand the tunnel concept of intersection and long tunnel by making it elliptical in shape, while also coating parts of it in an icy terrain to make stabilizing yourself a greater challenge. The new dimensions of the tunnel do wonders in making it feel distinct, and makes it far easier to lose all speed if you're too reckless. Not to mention how invigorating it is to drive through the loop and corkscrews within it. Add in the split path at the end, and we have ourselves a course that's out of this world. Split paths on a track always add some good variety, and Double Branches expands that concept to its near fullest. A majority of this track is split in two, and they combine it with the full extent of the game's anti-gravity to the degree where you can see the other racers driving right above, or below, on the opposite track which is a cool-ass visual. The course is also quite difficult with an early stretch lacking any guardrails and jumps between crossing paths that can be a bitch to land properly, but save some significant time if you take the gamble. The cherry on top is that it builds upon the idea of needing to accurately hit speed boost that Split Oval introduced, but with a harder layout, turning this course into the wildest roller coaster you'll ever ride. Are you a fan of courses that have depth-defying jumps that make you feel like a daredevil when taking them? Then Ordeal is the course for you. There's never a dull moment in this place because of how many times you'll be hopping what is literally death to your machine. Boosting over these gaps is gratifying as all hell, and the track puts the lessons that Drift Highway taught you to the next level, with sharper turns and a narrower track that can only be conquered by the most skilled of pilots. Or you could be like me, and end the race while your car is literally in the middle of exploding. To make things more intense, the two refill pads on the track are relatively small and aren't enough to compensate for how gigantic this place really is. But, if you do manage to conserve your energy well, you can take a faster route to the left of the section right before the underwater tunnel to hopefully boost past some of the competition. While it's famous for being that one stage in Smash Bros., Aerodrive is a rock-solid course that serves as an example for how to make a phenomenal F-Zero track. There's no central gimmick, and it relies on perfecting the simpler elements a track can have. Turns that are tough, but very possible to take plenty of jumps and gaps to keep you on your toes, and some steep inclines to raise your heart rate. Plus there's one giant leap towards the end that's dope as hell. Aerodrive is simplistic, but is able to immaculately encapsulate what makes GX one of the best racing games ever made. Remember Multiplex and all of its 90 degree turns? Welcome to the upgraded version of that. Thunder Road takes everything that worked about the aforementioned course and expands it into a gauntlet of a course that throws something new at you every step of the way you'll have to navigate through dastardly turns, narrow straights, tight curves, risky jumps, and plenty of other twists. All of these elements would already make this a top tier course, but it's elevated further when factoring in the abundant health pads that almost beg you to abuse that boost button until it doesn't work anymore. That being said, try not to get too overzealous unless you want to feel the rolling thunder. As the name implies, this track is split into three separate lanes for most of its runtime, and while that's already unique in its own right, the course also has the distinction of having next to no guardrails. One wrong turn and you'll be plummeting to your untimely death. Thankfully, the actual layout of the track is rather simple, sporting no sharp turns whatsoever. Normally, staying on the track is pretty easy as long as you don't get too aggressive trying to kill CPUs. However, this all changes when boosting gets involved and you'll need to boost to win since this place has health pads all over the place, prompting the CPUs to have absolutely no chill. It also means there's not much stopping you from continually boosting besides the risk of falling off. I love how this level takes the risk vs reward boost system to its absolute limits, and it makes for an experience that's terrifying and frantic. Serial Gaps is a drastic step up in difficulty compared to any track preceding it, and it'll kick your balls relentlessly the first time you take it on. Guardrails are missing for half of the track, and the gaps in the road are placed at angles that can make landing properly a daunting task. Not to mention incredibly cheeky ice strips and mine placements that'll no doubt trip you up even further. But holy fuck if it isn't satisfying to conquer this course after countless failed attempts. This track is brutal as hell, but the abundance of jumps, health pads allow you to take insane shortcuts that make winning this one feel better than the rest. I also love how your speed is rewarded at the end, allowing you to take an upper path, but you still can't overdo it or else you'll go flying right back down to loser lane. 
This track can be downright unfair at times, and a lot of my deaths have felt like utter BS. That's also half the reason I love this track so much. Long distant jump pads? Check. Abundant health pads for plentiful boosting? Check. This track literally has my two favorite level design features while increasing the danger with minimal guardrails and bumpy roads that can potentially send you off course if you aren't careful enough. This course is always an energetic tango for first place, and those jump pads are seriously spectacular, giving you enough air to potentially skip a majority of those pesky bump sections. My personal favorite element is the hills that may as well have a sign that says, PLEASE BOOST, since it feels criminal not to do so especially when they entice you with the healing pads. Tony Hawk meets F-Zero and the results are unsurprisingly superb. Most of the track is a halfpipe, meaning guardrails are a rarity. However, the lack of these can actually be a benefit here since there are several areas where you can literally ramp off the pipe and take ludicrous shortcuts that make you feel like a badass for pulling off. It's also a level where you have to be smart with your boost since there's only one health pad on the entire track, and to make matters worse, right before said pad are several gates that emit laser beams that can whittle away at what's left of your energy. Halfpipe may be a merciless track, but you'll feel like a god once you've mastered all the advanced tricks the radical dadical design of this course provides. It's almost fitting how the game's final track is also its best. The course starts off with a bang as you're immediately thrown into a tube that has a cylinder inside of it. Not only does this look sick as hell, but being able to drive on both types of special track in one course is a novelty on its own. But that's just scratching the surface. This track is jam-packed with devilish turns, and the last quarter of the level is downright vile, throwing large chunks of icy terrain with quite literally the sharpest turn in the entire game right before the finish. This is also the longest course in the game, but it feels more bombastic than most thanks to the plentiful health pads that ensure you can keep boosting no matter where you are. It also helps that this course is visually the most impressive in the game, and it's insane to think this comes from a 2003 GameCube game. You'll travel through dense forests, enter a small enclosure filled with intricate purple lights, and you'll see a view of the whole planet via the metal graded track. Spiral is truly a masterpiece of a race course, and it's the magnum opus of F-Zero's track design in general. Please Nintendo, give us a new modern style F-Zero game, so we can perhaps reach or even surpass the quality that this track has displayed for us. So there's the list. Most of you will disagree with my picks, and that's perfectly fine. Rankings like this are always subjective, and I'd love to hear yours in the comments below. Also, for those of you who've never played F-Zero GX, I beyond highly recommend it, because I'd argue no other racing game has topped this one's sense of speed, even 20 years after its release. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.